Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I am uh, delighted to be here with you and I'd like to say uh, thank you to the uh, uh, Awards Committee for uh, giving me honor to present uh, Emma's lecture to, to you today. I'd like to start with uh, acknowledging my uh, collaborator, Ted Sheffer, uh, used to work uh, for 3M Australia for about 30 years. Uh, Ted developed a number of formulations of firefighting forms and he was the inventor of probably the, the, uh, the most important uh, uh, fluorine free form called healing form uh, that he invented uh, in early 2000. Uh, my presentation today is about compatibility of aqueous uh, fill forming forms uh, called AFFF uh, with uh, uh, seawater. Uh, th these forms were initially developed uh, in the uh, beginning of 1960s, uh, but it was really the, uh, the fire on the aircraft carrier Forrestal in 1967 that gave uh, the forms a uh, uh, very early start. Uh, uh, the Forrestal uh, was participating in the uh, Vietnam War in the Gulf of Tonkin, and there was an accident with uh, uh, misfire of the uh, Zuni uh, missile that hit one of the aircraft on the uh, deck of the aircraft carrier and, and big fire erupted, uh, uh, bombs started to explode it. Uh, one of those explosions uh, killed the entire fire crew and the, uh, it was evident just after that that the fire, that the uh, sailors on the uh, forestal were not prepared uh, to fight fires. Uh, when one team uh, was trying to apply uh, a protein form, another team was using seawater washing um, away the foam. An investigation after that revealed that uh, uh, the Navy needs to prepare more personnel to fight fires, but also needs to switch uh, from uh, protein foam uh, to fluorosurfactant based forms that were developed at that time. And uh, I'd like to just give you now a, a brief introduction to how uh, firefighting AFFF uh, aqueous field forming foam work. Uh, what I have here is the uh, the hot fuel surface and the foam would be applied somewhere here and the foam drains and creates this uh, thin film. A film film is about uh, 15 millimeter thick, so it's about uh, human hair thick, uh, is aqueous, it contains fluorosurfactants. Uh, those fluorosurfactants and hydrocarbon surfactants uh, place themselves at the uh, edge of the film. The fluorosurfactants are uh, oleophobic, meaning that uh, they're changed uh, uh, repose uh, oil and that results in the thin film kind of floating on water. So uh, 3M called it technology light water. And there's a force balance between surface tensions. Uh, surface tension on, in the fuel uh, drives the film this way and the interfacial tension and the surface tension of the aqueous film drive the other way. So the film can move forward only if the surface tension of fuel is larger than the surface tension of foam solution plus interfacial tension. Uh, two phenomena take, take place. Uh, the first one is the film. Uh, when it moves on the hot fuel, it cools down the very top of the fuel. And if it cools, uh, when it cools it down, uh, the less fuel evaporates. And secondly, the, uh, the film, film itself is a barrier to uh, diffusion. Uh, so the, uh, the fire is, so, so to speak, starve of the uh, yeah. flammable fuel. Fuel uh, vapors. Bozio, sorry for the interruption, but uh, could you go to uh, the presentation mode for your slides here? They are not maximized on the screen, so sorry for the interruption. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I sorry I pressed the wrong button. Uh, so, uh, uh, so what is the presentation about? Uh, I'll be talking about firefighting forms, especially uh, firefighting forms class, called Class B forms that are used against Class B fires. B, class B fires are fires of flammable liquids. I'll be talking about formulation of uh, uh, firefighting foam, especially formulations introduced by 3M company between 1960s and 2006. Uh, I'll be talking about fundamental science uh, relating to, uh, uh, to foams. Uh, and then uh, I will also cover defense use of 3M formulation. Uh, 3M was extremely successful uh, with uh, 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 military application, dominated uh, uh, defense sector. Uh, about 60% of foams uh, sold to the defense sector was, came from uh, 3M. Uh, it completely monopolized naval application in the US, Australia, and other countries. And I'd like to uh, describe to you today why that happened. 
uh, I'll also talk about performance standards and uh, uh, aim to address the focusing question why certain fluorocarbons work well with seawater why others fail and so I'll introduce a concept of uh, uh, ionization and I basically uh, analyze uh, uh, the forensically the achievement of 3M scientists uh, in formulating uh, 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 film forming forms that were resistant to seawater. Uh, 3M had very uh, special technology uh, in uh, uh, producing fluorosurfactant. It, it used uh, uh, what was called uh, uh, Simon cell. Uh, basically, uh, it was a reactor that was filled uh, with, say, octanoic acid and also uh, liquid uh, uh, hydrofluoric acid. Uh, it was a, a, a cell with cathodes uh, being uh, uh, iron and then nickel uh, anodes. The current was put in with four to six volts and then uh, the chemical reaction happened. It wasn't as clean as it's written here. It actually produced a whole bunch of different compounds and uh, the branch uh, chains and straight chains. Also, the, uh, the chains were shorter or longer. It's a trademark of, of 3M uh, formulation that, uh, that compositions contain hundreds of different species just because of the uh, uh, very severe condition in the cell. And then the liquid products were drained from the bottom. Uh, HF was uh, uh, liquefied here and, and uh, put back into reactor and uh, CFC, carbo carbon fluorocarbons were, were then produced in the gas phase. Uh, uh, in 2000, uh, 3M uh, uh, withdrew from the market, uh, uh, producing fluorosurfactants in, in stop productions in 2002, and the last sales was uh, uh, in 2006. A uh, large body of literature exists about uh, uh, fluorochemistry of, uh, of 3M, uh, especially of, uh, about the toxicity, ecotoxicity, uh, and there are multiple suits, as you know, right now. Uh, all of this uh, is uh, slightly outside uh, the today presentation. I, I focus today on the technical details of the formulations uh, rather than on environmental aspects. And so my presentation will be basically in four parts. I cover fundamental concept of firefighting forms uh, in a sense that's a crash course on firefighting forms. I will then proceed to cover uh, 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 compatibility of seawater. Uh, uh, firefighting forms uh, uh, tend to rely on different type of, uh, of science that we normally de deal with firefighting. There's a lot of synthetic chemistry and there's a lot of colloids and colloidal and surface chemistry. And then I cover uh, four technologies that were developed by 3M scientists. I talk about acidic formulations, sulton formulations, acrylic formulations, amine oxide formulations. Sultons formulations are probably the bread and butter. Uh, this is what, make, uh, what made the uh, company tick. Uh, Sultan formulation are the best formulations of uh, AFFF ever produced. And finally, I, I, I uh, summarize the findings. Uh, so very quickly, uh, I have a slide that uh, gives different types of, uh, of uh, forms uh, that were either used in the past or are used in the now, is in, uh, are used now. Let me just focus uh, on this uh, legacy PFOS forms where 3M formulated uh, most of its form, um, it had two type of fluorosurfactant. Uh, uh, one was called foamer and one was called filmer. Uh, the role of foamer was to produce uh, a nice form. It had very low surface tension of about 16 uh, millinewtons per meter. Uh, uh, the, the purpose of the filmer uh, was to uh, make a film that was resistant to heat. And uh, 3M, for most of, of their form, use uh, perfluorooctane sulfonate as a filmer, uh, potassium perfluorosulfonate. We know that that causes tremendous damage to the environment. Uh, and because uh, perfluorosulfonate uh, is called PFOS, 3M forms uh, were denoted also as, a P as PFOS forms. And if you look at this uh, K PFOS here, it has six or eight atoms of, uh, of ca carbons that are completely fluorinated. And those type of forms are also called legacy C8, AFFF. And very recently, uh, uh, people mostly on the environmental side of uh, firefighting forms started calling all those forms that we, the 3M use and, and competitors use as PFAS, PFAS forms. Uh, and that means uh, pair and polyfluoroalkyl substances. Uh, 
I'd like to make sure that everyone is on the same page, so to speak, um, and uh, I'd like to cover <coughs> foam concentrates. Foam concentrates are usually sold as 1%, 3%, or 6%. Uh, 1% means that uh, uh, a con that one part of the concentrate is diluted with 99 parts of water. 3% uh, means that three parts of concentrates are diluted with 97 parts of water, and 6% mean that 6% uh, of uh, six uh, parts of water are diluted with uh, 94 parts of, uh, of concentrate. Uh, and then uh, uh, once you dilute uh, uh, the concentrate, the, uh, the solution that you get is called premix. So I'll be using the term premix quite often uh, today, so please try to remember. And uh, most of the forms that I will describe today uh, are those uh, uh, 3 percent uh, forms. Uh, concentrates of A3PF contain fluorosurfactants, hydrocarbons, hydrocarbon surfactants, corrosion inhibitors, solvents, pH buffers, and so on and so forth. And I repeat that uh, several times during my talk and, and give you the formulations that they were used by different 3M technologies. And so let's just step in and uh, uh, talk about typical uh, molecule of uh, fluorosurfactant. Um, it has uh, uh, a tail that is perfectly fluorinated. It has a tail that is submerged in the aqueous phase. Uh, and the head usually is ionized, so it's soluble. Uh, sometimes it just has a positive charge. Sometimes it has negative charge. The head that is here, that I have here for you, it has both positive and negative charge. Uh, in the uh, jargon, firefighting jargon, this is called a beta betaine type of uh, fluorosurfactant. And then there's a link section uh, that contains C2H4 group here, and then what we call sulfonamido group uh, here. Uh, what I would like you uh, to remember uh, from the presentation today is that uh, uh, 3M uh, surfactants did not have that C2H4 uh, link. So uh, a sulfonamido group or amido group uh, was directly connected uh, uh, to the fluoro chain, and that created a lot of problems uh, uh, for uh, 3M. And I describe that in more detail later. Uh, I'd like to introduce the concept of pKa. Uh, the chemists, uh, uh, when they describe acidic or acids, uh, they talk about deprotonation of, of, uh, of acid, and I have a sulfuric acid here that uh, uh, gets deprotonated into uh, H+, and uh, uh, by sulfate, HSO4. And, and then the question is, how do we describe that uh, deprotonation? And we use this ionization constant called Ka, which is equilibrium constant, basically a concentration of uh, uh, by sulfate times concentration of proton divided by concentration of sulfuric acid that remains. And the lo logarithm, decimal logarithm of uh, Ka is called pKa. Uh, the lower pKa, the more acidic a substance. So uh, the typical acids like sulfuric acid could have pKa of one. Sometimes as acids have a negative pKa. And then there's a concept of, a, uh, of, uh, of pH. pH is a uh, uh, decimal logarithm of the concentration of protons. Uh, chemical engineer would say, well, it's actually activity of proton, and that's true. Uh, when the uh, pH is seven, uh, the uh, Aqueous solution is neutral, as we all, below seven is acidic, and above seven is, uh, is basic. A molecule of a, of a surfactant may have several ionization constants or several ionization centers. So it could uh, have a few positive charges and few negative charges and so on. Let me show you a picture that describes this uh, in, uh, in more detail. Um, I have uh, a, a molecule uh, uh, of uh, surfactant uh, taken from the previous slide, and uh, I show you uh, how the ionization changes as pH changes. Uh, for very low pH, uh, below two, only uh, uh, the nitrogen here is ionized. It's a quaternary nitrogen is always positive, and so for low pHs, uh, uh, the molecule is uh, what we call cationic. Uh, as pH increases, uh, that uh, hydrogen on the OH group here is pulled off, and the molecule uh, becomes uh, uh, what we call the sweeter ion. So it has both negative and positive charges. And then if pH increases even further, something extraordinary happens. Uh, this uh, hydrogen attached to nitrogen uh, in sulfonamido group gets uh, uh, deprotonated. 
and then molecule has two negative charges and one positive charge and it becomes anionic. And, uh, and so what's the practical um, implication of this? Uh, uh, the water that we normally uh, encounter in the environment uh, are within the, this range, between five and eight. Uh, fresh waters are usually around five, stream waters maybe around six, rivers would be around seven, but the seawater uh, have pH of about uh, 8.2. And that's quite important uh, uh, because the higher the pH, uh, this proton here gets the protonated and creates a lot of havoc uh, in the formulations. So for this particular surfactant, everything is fine. We have a sweeter ions and that works very well, but there was a problem uh, for 3M formulations. I also like to introduce the concept of critical micelle concentration uh, is a, a very important concept uh, uh, in firefighting. Uh, what I have here is the surface tension as a function of the concentration of the uh, one of the fluorosurfactants. If there is very little fluorosurfactant added uh, to the um, uh, water, uh, the, the surface tension uh, uh, drops as a function of concentration of the fluorosurfactant until uh, a point where no longer uh, surface tension is affected uh, by the concentration of fluorosurfactants. And this point is called critical micelle concentration. What happens at that point is that you add more fluorosurfactants and uh, surfactants organizes itself into those uh, globular uh, looking uh, uh, features that, uh, that have uh, fluorosurfactants at the, at the walls with the uh, had group sticking in the um, aqueous phase and the tails uh, uh, pointing uh, against each other. Uh, the the micelles are about 300, maybe 200 uh, uh, microns in diameter, <coughs> in di nanometers in diameter, um, and uh, uh, and it constitute uh, uh, what I would call the, uh, a reservoir of, of fluorosurfactants. The practical importance of this is that. Uh, that one wants to formulate firefighting forms uh, that have about eight to 10 times uh, concentration, uh, times fluorosurfactant that corresponds to critical micelle concentration. So critical micelle concentration here is about uh, 0 0.035. Uh, and so if you multiply by eight in the premix, uh, you want to have uh, around 0.2% uh, of fluorosurfactants. And uh, we should also uh, not forget uh, that uh, uh, firefighting forms also contain diethylene glycol monobutyl ether uh, that tends to suppress uh, the formation of CMC. It, for, it produces smaller looking uh, micelles that move quicker uh, and then reach uh, interface faster. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, here, uh, what I have uh, are two types of uh, standards that we use for firefighting. Uh, uh, one is called uh, performance standards and design standards. I'll be concerned with performance standards in this presentation. Uh, performance standards are um, define the fire size, the application rate, and the point of extinguishment. If the, if the form passes uh, a performance standards, then one applies a safety factor to get uh, design concentration of the form, and then one uses the uh, uh, design standard uh, for designing a system. Uh, so what is the presentation uh, today? Uh, we're now stepping into uh, the second part of uh, seawater compatibility. And a few more concepts. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, take uh, a little bit of time to describe to you the importance of hardness and importance of the fact that different standards uh, define seawater quite differently. Uh, and so the hardness itself is the concentration of divalent uh, uh, metals, calcium, magnesium, and others uh, expressed as calcium carbonates. Uh, it car uh, hardness doesn't say anything about pH of the uh, of the waters. Now there are two types of standards uh, that define uh, seawater. One is this uh, ASTM D1141. It's a fantastic standard. Uh, it describes very accurately what needs to be added, uh, what elements need to be added to form seawater. It describes that pH has to be adjusted uh, to 8.2. Uh, uh, and so uh, all uh, 
uh, these two standards, UL162 and MILSPEC, use the uh, uh, the ASTM uh, D1141 definition of seawater. So if someone uses those two standards and, and says the form is resistant to seawater, that means that the uh, proper definition of seawater is used. But unfortunately, uh, around the world, uh, uh, this is not always true. Uh, there are uh, standards uh, that uh, define seawater quite differently. And uh, the best example is Australian standard that just defines seawater as a little bit of sodium chloride and magnesium sul sulfate. Uh, the Europeans are slightly better. Uh, they include uh, 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 calcium. Uh, there's still no bicarbonate and there's still no, no boron. There's no pH adjustment. So when you look at standards like this and, and people claiming that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the formulation is uh, resistant to seawater according to those standards, uh, we know that something important uh, is missing uh, and that's pH. And so uh, I have a, uh, example here of the Australian sardan being used and there's no pH adjustment. So um, in cases like this, really what is being tested is not uh, resistant to seawater, but uh, the resistant to hardness. And the effect of hardness on firefighting foam can be positive or negative. Uh, and in this case it's positive, actually it improves uh, extinguishment. Uh, so um, let me just talk about the, uh, the 3M uh, surfactants. Uh, the characteristics of 3M surfactants was that uh, that sulfonamido group was placed next to uh, this fluoro chain. And that created a lot of problems because made this uh, uh, proton uh, resting on, on nitrogen easily uh, leaving the molecule. And, and that happens uh, uh, here uh, around, around, uh, <coughs> around eight. Uh, 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 the, the problem is that uh, very few measurements are available uh, for the deprotonation of this, uh, of this proton here. Uh, and, and so um, we tried to use, uh, to, to look for the experimental data that was unavailable. Uh, we tried to then model it uh, uh, using different software packages to predict the deprotonation of, of this nitrogen. This is important because if this is deprotonated at low pH, it spells us, it spells the inefficiency uh, of that of that uh, fluorosurfactant to, to deal with seawater. And so uh, we look at the uh, several packages uh, available on the market uh, to predict pKa. Uh, at the end, uh, uh, Spark software is probably the, the best uh, uh, available. Uh, we, we also uh, uh, search the literature for uh, different uh, ionization constant for uh, chemical species containing amido uh, sulfur amido and amido group, uh, we found them, but not in water, in other solvents. Uh, we then predicted uh, the ionization constants with spark. And you see the, uh, that, the, uh, that there's a great difference uh, between uh, pKa predicted and pKa uh, measured from experiment. And the difference is 1.7. So every time I calculate uh, the pKa for sulfur amido group or amido group, uh, it has to be adjusted by 1.7. Other packages that we tested were unable to, uh, to deal with this problem of uh, ionization of uh, sulfon amido group or amido group connected directly to the fluoro chain. Okay. Uh, and uh, here's probably the most important slide of the presentation because it described what happens uh, when the foam is not resistant uh, uh, to uh, seawater. Um, in order for the foam to be not to be resistant to seawater, two things might must happen. Uh, the first, the foam must must contain hardness, so it must contain magnesium or calcium, and then this uh, hydrogen must uh, deprotonate. And when the hydrogen deprotonates, it forms negatively charged nitrogen, and that negatively charged and nitrogen interacts with uh, with magnesium ions, forming those bridges. And some of the molecules is twice as long, and that molecules precipitate. Uh, you, you can observe haziness uh, uh, in the formulation and the formulation loses its uh, 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 resistance uh, against seawater. So the incompatibility stems from the combined effect of hardness and pH. And this means that presence of magnesium and pH both occur in, in seawater. And so the attempts of uh, 3M engineers, uh, as you will see in scientists, were then to eliminate this uh, ionization here. Okay, the effect of hardness uh, 
uh, is actually often very positive uh, on fire suppression. And the reason is that uh, uh, the fluorosurfactant head groups are often charged. So if that charge is uh, at the surface, the, uh, uh, the, the head groups uh, uh, repulse each other. And if you add uh, a positively charged metals, uh, those positively charged metals uh, tend to screen the charges. So it allows the molecules to be packed uh, more closely uh, to each other. And that means that the surface tension may, for example, decrease. So it's easier to, to build a foam. And that effect is called charge screening um, or charge shielding. So the hardness itself is actually good. Most of the experimental data that we have seen on fire extinguishment tells us that the uh, uh, hardness by itself is good for firefighting. It is the pH uh, that often makes the difference. And here is a couple of examples uh, uh, from a different field that we couldn't find the examples uh, of the effect of hardness uh, for fluorosurfactants. So those are uh, alpha olefin sulfonate surfactants that are used in the uh, oil production. But what that, that, tell, that graph tells you is that uh, if you have surfactant uh, by itself, uh, the surface tension requires more surfactant. If you add salt very quickly, the surface tension drops down and that's what you need. And secondly, um, if you have hardness uh, with your surfactants, uh, the foam st uh, stays higher for longer. So the hardness is good. It's the pH that makes the, the problem. And uh, uh, this brings me to the uh, first formulation uh, that 3M introduced on the market around 1967. Uh, those were acidic formulations. Uh, and you probably now guess why uh, those acidic formulations uh, had pH uh, relatively low and un under the low pH uh, sulfur amido group and amido group were not deionized. And so uh, uh, during this research, we very carefully um, went through all the available uh, 3M patents. Uh, we spoke to people who uh, were involved with research and we also look at the NRL reports, Naval Research Laboratory reports, <coughs> there are about seven of them published in 1960s and 1970s and a couple of uh, 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 Federal Aviation Administration report that that allow us to piece the puzzle a little bit uh, what 3M did in uh, 1960s. We didn't have access to uh, 3M archives. Uh, so uh, here is the uh, the type of uh, of very early the first uh, formulation brought on the market called FC183. FC is just the serial number. Every new uh, mixture of fluorosurfactant was given the number, and you would see that. <coughs> that uh, 3M at that time introduced uh, two types of uh, surfactants. Uh, one, they call it compound A, uh, which was uh, later called uh, a foamer, and then a compound B, which was a filmer. And here uh, we have a couple of foamers. You would see that initial uh, formulations of uh, 3M foams uh, have a sulfur amino group and has this uh, hydrogen here on the nitrogen. But because the formulation is acidic, uh, it's about four or five, that hydrogen is not ripped off. And here is the uh, amido group uh, type of form formulation. Uh, uh, that early formulation were quite nasty. Uh, they were acidic, they were corrosive, uh, they contain chloride ions. So chloride ions tend to corrode through a stainless steel 304, for example. They were very viscous. They could not be used on ships because they were acidic. They could not be mixed with uh, basic seawater. And they, uh, they came as 25% concentrate, so they could only be expanded uh, or mixed with water in proportion to one to three. And finally, they had to be expanded uh, with CFC12. So although they work well on fresh water, they did not work, they did not work on seawater. And uh, the progress was, was made quickly after that. In around 1970, uh, the 3M uh, developed forms that have uh, relatively low viscosity and, uh, and uh, uh, the biggest progress probably happened because of this fellow Francine and two patents that he published in, in uh, uh, late 1960s. And then, uh, and then the filmers. Uh, uh, so I, I have a couple of examples of early filmers. Uh, uh, the the first filmer on the left uh, is a two-component filmer. Uh, it consists of a PFOA. It's the only example that 3M uh, consciously used PFOA in its formulations, uh, and it is here. Uh, PFOA is not uh, resistant to heat as much as PFOS, and so was quickly replaced uh, 
in subsequent formulation by potassium uh, perfluoro uh, uh, octanoic uh, octane sulfonate. Uh, uh, while both filmers and formers are surface active and their properties tend to coincide, uh, they tend to modify differently different properties of the forms. As I said, formers uh, is about making forms fluffy, making bubbles small, diffusing very quickly to the interface, sustaining the interface, whereas filmer is about making uh, the interface resistant to heat. Uh, the, the first formulation uh, that uh, really uh, revo revolutionized uh, firefighting was this FC200. Uh, and that's we have the greatest difficulty to find out what actually that was. Uh, it was never mentioned by name in any of the patents. Uh, it was mentioned by name in uh, some reports, and uh, but in such a way that we're not sure what that is chemically. Uh, uh, the reports claim that uh, FC200 had the right viscosity very low viscosity of about 10 millinewton per meter uh, that uh, did not contain chloride uh, uh, it, and uh, but did not mention whether it was acidic or not acidic and so uh, we have great difficulty to understand what that com what that formulation was and so on the right hand side we just uh, uh, put a few compounds uh, that might have been used in FC200 but really don't know uh, this compounds here is still uh, uh, contains uh, sulfur amido group, uh, but it has this bulky uh, uh, benzene ring that may probably prevent uh, magnesium to attach itself here and cause problems with seawater. Alternatively, uh, FM, FC200 was perhaps the first sulton formulation that uh, replaced uh, hydrogen with the, uh, uh, with the uh, C, uh, C, C2H4, CO3 minus or uh, 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 C2H4 or C2H6 uh, uh, SO3 minus group. And so that brings uh, uh, me to, uh, uh, to to give you a typical formulation of the uh, acidic uh, uh, concentrate. Uh, it contained former, it contained filmer, uh, much more former than filmer. It contained hydrocarbon surfactant. Hydrocarbon surfactants are important because they minimize the, uh, the interfacial tension. They also decrease the cost of the form and that had the early solvents and a water and the pH was adjusted to about uh, 4 and to 5 and uh, uh, it actually uh, didn't have corrosion inhibitors so that's, a, that's an error here but it had high uh, uh, concentration of organic fluorine a 3.1 percent and 6 percent concentrate is huge it's about seven to eight times more that is presently used and a few important considerations uh, for 3M. 3M used to uh, use Francine's patent to, uh, 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 to try to suppress the competition. But in, 2000, uh, in 1988, uh, the second Francine patent was disclaimed. The problem was that uh, uh, 3M claimed as an inventive step mixing of fluorosurfactants surfactants uh, with hydrocarbon surfactants. But actually the concept of mixing fluorosurfactants and hydrocarbon surfactants to decrease interfacial tension was due to Ratzer. And uh, when this was brought to the attention of the court, uh, uh, the, the Francine patents were struck down. But the Francine patent, patents were very innovative. And when you look and read the patents, uh, had many in, in, in inventive and innovative steps that were not claimed by 3M. Uh, for example, it, uh, the, the patent introduced uh, the ethylene glycyl monobutyl ether as a solvent. Uh, this uh, uh, has been used uh, for about three decades uh, in formulation of firefighting from after Francis' invention. Uh, it introduced uh, elegant amine oxide fluor surfactant systems. Uh, uh, that was the last uh, fluor surfactant system introduced by 3M around 2000 and is now being used in uh, C6 type of uh, surfactants, modern surfactants. Uh, it also uh, uh, find a way to deal with uh, protonation of sulfon amido group uh, um, by introducing bulky uh, bulky group next to the uh, sulfon amido group that prevented uh, magnesium to react uh, uh, with the protonated groups and forming bridges and uh, and then uh, 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 causing haziness in, in formulation. Uh, and then uh, uh, Francine realized the importance of the uh, of the of the mixture of hydrocarbons and fluorocarbons on the 
on the speed of spreading of thin films. So that brings me to the um, uh, Sultan formulation, uh, most important uh, formulation used by 3M, produced over three decades, uh, probably the best ever from the technical aspect of it, uh, uh, formulation of firefighting forms. Uh, uh, the, uh, in, in, uh, in about 19, uh, uh, 1970, uh, it was this federal public uh, that realized what the problem was with the, uh, with the acidic formulation, that the problem was with NH. And public uh, set out to show that he can use this, uh, this drawback to his advantage. Uh, he realized that, uh, uh, that H is deprotonated in around uh, 8.2. And so what he did, uh, very smartly, he uh, deprotonated the, uh, the surfactant and put something else on the top of it. And something else was this propane sulton. So he took the propane sulton, synthesized it with the, uh, the compound and attached the, uh, the sulton chain here. And that sulton chain is uh, illustrated right here. So you have C3H6 uh, here plus SO3 minus. And then all the problems uh, with acidic formulations of 3M disappeared. Uh, it was the one of the best uh, uh, foam uh, formulation ever. There were two types of it. Uh, one contained OH group here, one without OH group. Uh, this was predominantly used in firefighting form. This was uh, predominantly used in fire extinguisher. And the right uh, uh, 3M patent is this one by Berger. And then, uh, I'll just go briefly through here. So uh, what uh, uh, a public did replace NH with this, uh, this uh, Sultan group. <coughs> and here I have typical formulation of the, uh, probably the best selling uh, uh, concentrate produced by, uh, by 3M company. It was called FC203CE made on for, um, uh, for the US Navy. Uh, it contained uh, a mixtures of, uh, of, of two formers, uh, according to the company. In practicality, it had hundreds of different species. It has potassium uh, PFOS as a filmer. It has it had uh, a mixture of three hydrocarbon surfactants, corrosion inhibitor, solvent, water. And uh, it had relatively high uh, fluorine uh, content. Uh, if you compare to the uh, uh, formulation of the competitors, of the telomer formulations of the competitors that had 0.8%, uh, total organic fluorine, it had 2.1, but it worked like a charm. And uh, it was the most successful formulations uh, of, uh, of 3M. It was manufactured between uh, 1971 and 2002. It established dominant position of 3M in the defense sector, especially in the naval applications. Uh, US Navy, Australian Navy, and European Navy did, did buy nothing but uh, 3M products. Uh, uh, in the US, uh, sulfon formers were substituted uh, for so-called acrylic formers in 1990s, uh, but uh, uh, 3M subsidiaries in, in Australia and U Europe uh, continue to use sulfon formers until the phase out. Uh, uh, they complain about uh, uh, lower performance of uh, acrylic formulations and, and large and higher costs. Uh, in Australia, uh, uh, we have a different standard. Uh, uh, for testing uh, a firefighting foam that uses uh, a fixed nozzle rather than skilled firefighter as in US mill spec. And therefore FC203 failed that standard, Australian standard. So 3M solution was to uh, introduce new formulation. In Australia it was called FC3002. Uh, uh, it had higher uh, content of about, higher content of total organic fluorine by about 30%, but it worked. And, uh, uh, and I just want to say that uh, uh, I just want to say that uh, 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 formers and filmers were very impure, and the, the 3M never uh, tried to purify uh, the uh, the synthesis products. And here is the uh, uh, what uh, if you read the literature on uh, what has been identified in aquifers, and you see that uh, 3M uh, in in uh, size that use 3M products, and you look in aquifers, you see hundreds of species. Uh, on the left hand side, I have species that come with the filmer, former, and on the right with the, uh, uh, with the former. You see that uh, uh, the sulton groups could be attached to different parts of the molecules. Uh, the molecule could be uh, between three and nine atoms long, and uh, the same goes for filmer. 
Uh, we have uh, the molecules which are shorter, longer. Uh, that are partly fluorinated with sulfur being fluorinated. There are hundreds and hundreds of them. And uh, and one more thing that I want to mention here is that uh, the 3M formulations were so good uh, because the uh, the dynamic surface tension dropped down very quickly. Uh, and and so when you're mixing forms, it's important that uh, that the surfactants transfer to the new interface very quickly within a second. And 3M surfactants did that within a second. Uh, the surface tension drop from about 70 for water to about 16 uh, for very stabilized the interface. The, uh, uh, here I have the, uh, the competitors, uh, telomer products uh, can do that uh, in about five seconds. So in about five seconds, the telomer products can drop the surface tension to about 20, but 3N products could drop within a second to 16. So, uh, so it was a fantastic, uh, fantastic product. Uh, and, then, uh, and then something happened uh, around 1990s and uh, uh, 3M decided to <coughs> introduce acrylic formulations. Uh, technically, there was no reason to do this. Uh, uh, salt on formers work extremely well. And so uh, we questioned ourselves why that happened. And the only answer we, we can come up with <coughs> was that uh, the 3M realized that uh, uh, PFOS was causing environmental damage and it was attempt by 3M to decrease the amount of fluorine. But the decrease was relatively small. And here are the, uh, the compounds uh, uh, that were used in acrylic formulation. This is the, the former itself. Uh, those are the byproducts that were in, in illustrated in the uh, 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 the patents. Uh, here is actually what was detected uh, in the water table. Again, uh, very impure uh, uh, species uh, 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 having uh, um, acrylic uh, added to uh, to different parts of the molecule. Uh, we also have acrylic and shorter shorter chain. Instead of C2H4, we have uh, CH2 added here. Um, we're not quite sure how that was synthesized without avoiding uh, introducing uh, uh, chlorine into the formulation. And and here is the uh, the typical acrylic formulation. Uh, so the filmer went down significantly, went down. But when you calculate <coughs> the total organic fluorine, is still high. It's 1.8. So the the uh, the fluorine went down by about 17 percent. Um, here is a. Uh, uh, a few iterations uh, how the 3M chemists try to synthesize acrylic formulations. Initially, they use a uh, propion lactone, but it was are carcinogenic. They also use chlor chloracetic acid, that's sodium chloroacetate, and that created chloride impurity that attack uh, uh, tanks. And then finally, they settle on the acrylic acid uh, uh, to synthesize this fluorosurfactant. That's why those uh, fluorosurfactants were called acrylic formulations. Now, uh, uh, we kind of guess, uh, looking at the formulas, that the, the 3M formulations might have been contaminated with chloride. And uh, if uh, uh, concentrate contain chloride, uh, one must use uh, marine grade stainless steel 316. One can also use uh, carbon steel bake tanks with phenolic coating or fiberglass reinforced with uh, isophthalic polyester. What I can, what one must not do is to use stainless steel 304 tanks or use short lifetime LDPA tanks because they would le leak. And then a uh, few important consideration. Um, Sultan former, uh, uh, when you look at uh, uh, in, in the papers, uh, 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 Sultan former turns up in acrylic formulations. Uh, and we're not sure why that happens. Uh, it might be used in the contaminated installation that used uh, uh, Sultan formers before. Uh, 3M might have used the uh, a uh, synthesis train that contain uh, 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 that was used previously to, to manufacture salt on form, but 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 may also be have been used to fortify acrylic formulations. Uh, the synthesis was specific; uh, uh, it happened uh, between uh, 1950 uh, degrees. Uh, acrylic uh, formulation with uh, uh, C2H two group instead of C2H4 were detected in aquifers. Uh, if that happens, we, we feel that uh, that uh, 3M phones might have contained chloride impurity. Uh, a, a precursor of of, uh, of synthesis of acrylic formula, uh, formers also turned up in aquifers. And then the savings on total organic fluorine was not much. It was about 17% only. And uh, Australian and European subsidiary never really switched to acrylic formulation, citing uh, higher cost and lower performance. Uh, and so it brings us, uh, that brings us to the last formulation uh, developed by 3M company. 
uh, called uh, uh, amine oxide. Uh, in the 3M jargon, uh, this was called re-engineering of firefighting foam. It happened uh, in the second part of 1990s. It was attempt by 3M companies to uh, drop down fluorine content to something uh, uh, comparable to its competitors. Uh, and it worked well. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, 3M uh, decided to uh, leave the market. And so those, uh, uh, I mean, oxide formulations were never implemented in practice in large extent. I think they, they were put on the market, but we do not that we do not see them in the aquifer underlying uh, testing grounds and on, on military grounds on airports. So we're pro they were never introduced into the military. But uh, there's a couple of uh, those, uh, uh, I mean, oxide formulations. Uh, the one on, on the left is probably the one that was uh, that was commercially uh, implemented. Uh, it has uh, 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 this very bulky uh, fluorosurfactant chain here next to the NH group. So even if the group uh, uh, deprotonates, uh, which would happen uh, around uh, 9.6, so it's uh, very little would deprotonate. And, and there's the bulky group that probably prevents the magnesium coming here and, and forming the bridges and, and creating problem with seawater. Uh, the problem probably is here. Uh, uh, this PKA is a true PKA of that OH compound. So uh, uh, what it means is that uh, we have a fluorosurfactant that within the window of pH normally expected in waters between six and eight, uh, this fluorosurfactant may change ionization uh, state, being uh, uh, positive here uh, to being uh, sweeter ionic. Uh, this may necessarily be bad, but it's that uh, the, uh, uh, the formulation would perform slightly differently with, if you use fresh water or if you use seawater, just because of the uh, ionization here. Um, and uh, soon after re-engineering of this fluorosurfactants, 3M uh, move out of the market and uh, and they were never implemented. But the uh, total fluorine content of those formulas was fantastic, was only 0.8. And so I'd like to show you, uh, to you the, uh, the typical uh, I mean oxide formulation. Uh, it has uh, uh, only a foamer, it doesn't have a filmer. Um, it has uh, a, a foamer that uh, has CMC, uh, critical mass concentration of 20 ppm. You can hardly see compounds like this uh, with 20 ppm. Uh, it, it was very, it had optimized uh, hydrocarbon surfactant, optimized for the environment. When th this was done, uh, those are the most uh, environmentally friendly fluor surfactants. Uh, also, the the, uh, the solvent was replaced for something that at the uh, around 2000 was believed to be environmentally friendly. And then uh, pH was adjusted to 8.3, total organic fluorine uh, 0.88. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> I, the amine oxide were designed to be sticky to soil, uh, so they don't enter the aquifer. Um, uh, literature uh, search uh, resulted in no mentioning of uh, amine oxide formulations uh, in uh, aquifers underlying, underlying military testing grounds. So they were never put on the, uh, uh, what is called uh, a qualified product list. Uh, although the patents uh, indicate testing uh, with um, to mil spec, uh, uh, we do not see the uh, formal uh, passing of uh, of this formulation by a mil spec standard uh, by Navy research, Naval Research Labs, and they were formulated for environment. So, so at the very end, 3M put a lot of effort to uh, re-engineer its form to be environmentally friendly. And amine oxide now uh, used quite often in six six formulation of modern PFAS forms, uh, as Capstones 1183 or ChemGuard FS1A3. F and that brings us uh, uh, to uh, conclusion. Uh, uh, by, by very carefully analyzing uh, the PKA uh, and uh, looking at the uh, hardness of forms, we realized that the problem with uh, seawater resistance was with this hydrogen attack to sulfon amido group or am amid amido group that was directly attached to perfluoro chain. Uh, this has not been published in open literature but must have been known to 3M chemists, especially to public, judging from his patent. Uh, the way he designed his synthesis process rely on deprotonating uh, those groups. Uh, we have also discovered that 3M researchers have invented new chemistries of effectively dealing with problems uh, with uh, chemical produced in uh, electrofluorination cells uh, that uh, avoided uh, uh, the uh, 
deprotonation of those two groups. Uh, we uh, evidently, uh, the sulton acrylic and amine oxide chemistry eliminated the lab, lab by, uh, proton or uh, introduced tearing hindrance, preventing magnesium to approach the molecule and, uh, and forming long bridges. Uh, and, and finally, 3M uh, uh, chemists uh, produce foams that work uh, beautifully between six and nine uh, of pH. Uh, we have separated the effect of physics, the effect of hardness from the effect of chemistry of the, uh, of the, of the, of the pH and pKa. We think the, the chemistry is more important. Uh, the hardness is usually good uh, uh, for firefighting, uh, uh, but uh, the uh, high pH and, uh, and, uh, and low pKa is a problem. And, and then uh, we also identify gaps in the literature. Uh, very little is known about uh, those flows of at the molecular level. Um, we suggest that more studies is done uh, uh, using small angle new neutron scattering and uh, molecular dynamics to understand how those surfactants uh, work at the molecular level. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, suggested that surfactants whose performance is sensitive to seawater must not change their ionization state. Uh, again, this is a hypothesis. Uh, uh, one should do uh, uh, more studies uh, of studying uh, performance surfactants as a pH. And I think the pH should be reported. So when you do firefighting suppression tests, you should report pH of the uh, of of your of your premix and also uh, we think that chloride should be reported so we think that both chloride and uh, and ph should be reported uh, in future studies and then we suggest that uh, uh, that the fire safety community defines the certified performance standards for firefighting forms similar to, to what us navy naval research lab did for a c6 type of modern uh, pfas uh, formulation uh, defining this uh, uh, reference a triple f and, and finally, the acknowledgements. I, I would like to say thank you for the uh, awards committee to invite us to give the talk, and also for many people uh, that uh, uh, that contributed to this paper by reading it and giving us feedback. Although mistakes are ours, obviously, uh, uh, this paper would not have uh, seen the light of the day if not for these uh, people uh, listed here. And I'd like to uh, uh, say a personal thank you to, to a couple of my PhD students uh, who work on firefighting form early in my, my career, and also two, two people from NRC Canada who were uh, instrumental in me entering the field, uh, Jack Moini and Andrew Key. My first project in NRC Canada was to, to play around uh, with uh, compressed, air for, compressed air form systems, uh, uh, CAFs. And so on this note, I'd like to uh, con conclude and, uh, and, uh, and, and open to questions.